another episode of Transformers for your listening pleasure. This is episode number 49, recorded Monday, October 8th, 2012. I am your host, Weird Wolf, along with uh, Natsume Ryu. Hello, everybody. And Sideburn 2. What's up, everybody? And Guard Convoy. Hello, everybody. Joining us from time to time will be Insane Galvatron. He's a little bit preoccupied right now, but uh, he may pop in the uh, chat once in a while. Uh, we are broadcasting live on uh, Google Plus Hangouts via YouTube. Uh, so if you are listening live, uh, welcome. And we would like to uh, invite you to ask any questions. Um, we'll try to keep it uh, keep it going here. Let me pull it up and make sure I've got, my, got the page open. Right. Um, let's see here. We got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Um, the last uh, episode that we had, we had Gary Chalk on, and uh, let's make sure I've got my. Hmm. It is. Not full screen for me. <laughs> oh, great. That's wonderful. What's up? Um, yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, uh, crap. Didn't pull up the page for me. Anyway, <laughs> um, anyway. Th I, I just love technology, how it works so so seamlessly half the time. Um, can uh, one of you all pull up the uh, the video? You that too. Way we can, yeah, that way we can uh, monitor the questions if anybody has any. Can do. Uh, and uh, we'll be, uh, briefly uh, go over uh, what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, we've had some, uh, uh, like I said, last week we had, or week before last, we took last week off because uh, some of us were uh, indisposed and everything. But... Um, a uh, week before last, we had Gary Chalk on. Uh, that episode should be available for download here within the next day or so. I've had a little bit of a backlog, but uh, I'm pretty much caught up with the exception of that episode. I need to do some uh, editing to that. Um, but tonight we've got uh, a lot of uh, big robots to talk about, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Transformers Prime. We've missed a couple episodes, but we'll just take off with the uh, the latest episode, which is Hard Knocks. Um, but first, before we get into that and any news, we'll talk about what made our wallets say "ouch" this week. Uh, Sideburn Two, you want to tell us uh, what's made your wallet say "ouch" for the last uh, few weeks? Well, I didn't get a whole done. Um, which should be no surprise because I ain't exactly rolling in money, but uh, I did manage to get Ball of Cybertron Jazz. Um, I found them at Target for like fourteen ninety nine, which was a shocker to find at Target. Um, and I got uh, Transformers Prime R.I.D. Starscream. Um, and then I think since the last time we did a uh, Ouch My Wallet, that also would Include I got the uh, Dinobot Destruction Pack for Qualt Cybertron. Um, oh, nice. I still have yet to pick that up. It's uh, the DLC is is isn't bad. Um, I was disappointed with their beast modes because the colors don't carry over very much. Um, but it was fun. You know, I found with the uh, uh, the DLC on the game, uh, well, not just the DLC, but whenever you create your own character, the it doesn't look the, exactly the way you want it to look for some reason. At least for me, it doesn't. Um, it kind of drives me nuts. Um, it's like you want to make an uh, make an acid storm. You can make a green character, but you can't add like accents or you know, like the black accents or anything like yeah. that. And it just kind of kind of yeah, that was uh, that was the downfall of them going to uh, limited color combinations instead of giving you just two 
areas to, you know it, and War for Cybertron it gave you the two different color sets that you could choose from where and then this one they they really limited it the day but at the we same can time expand an SG Thundercracker will be the day that we have a fully customizable <laughs> color palette I better turn my phone off before it goes off uh. yeah um now, uh, and then, uh, Jazz, uh, ja speaking of, but, blah, 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 blah. yeah, Jazz and Starscream, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jazz and Starscream, both good figures, I recommend them. Um, so, uh, which is your favorite out of those? Uh, it's, well, I'm going to say Starscream because I just love the design of Prime Starscream. Uh, it's yeah. Now this is the uh, the Voyager sized one, right? Yeah. Uh, the only the only problem I have with it is uh, when moving his arms, his chest comes unplugged. Um, but that's a minor annoyance to just how cool he looks when you get him in his hunchbacked sort of stance. Um, definitely, so far the uh, the ones I own the most solid figure of the Prime line. But of course, I don't have Dreadwing yet. You know, I've I've gotten rid of most of my uh, my prime figures, but uh, that Dreadwing just looks so enticing. Uh, it's a fantastic toy. Yeah, I, I, I like the character. I, well, the only two prime figures I have is the uh, first edition Starscream, and then I have the Cyberverse Commander uh, Dar uh, uh, Dreadwing. And seeing as how I have one Dreadwing, why not have the other? So. <laughs> um, uh, Natsume, uh, did you pick up anything this week or the last few weeks? I have, o oh only because only because uh, Sideburn brought it up. I bought the first and the last uh, DLC packs for Fall of Cybertron. I got I planned to buy the last one, and at the same time, uh, PlayStation had given me another free month of PS Plus, and that made the first DLC pack half price. So I got. The first one and the last one for about fifteen bucks. So I was pretty happy about that. Oh, nice. nice. Yep. I've still not gotten to pick up the Insecticon one. Um, I love, I've been playing I love, a lot of games and Fall of Cybertron sort of not been played <laughs> in oh. a couple of weeks. It's still on my computer though. I plan to get back to it. I just been I have been preoccupied <laughs> by Night uh, Still Republic. Nice, Aww. the old Republic. Isn't that game rather old? <laughs> 2003, <You know>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that all you picked up, uh, Natsume? It is. I still... Oh, no, I'm, she I'm disappeared. Poor. I'm oh, poor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm checking on these awful ants. I'm just making sure that they're not coming back. Yeah. Take yeah. care of the uncles, too. <laughs> the ants always oh, come back. Guard Convoy, I know you've got some stuff you, uh, you'd love to show us. Uh, oh, yes. Tons fire of away. Stuff. Seeing as it's the first time I've been back since June. Well, I'll do the on-topic stuff first. I recently got Masterpiece Thundercracker, which I love the new mold. Don't get me wrong, I love the old one because it's related to the Macross, but the new one is very fantastic. At the same time, I found Prime Dreadwing, which, as I've said already... It's an utterly fantastic toy. Easily my favorite of the Prime line. Thinking what else I got, I've got all the first wave of blind pack Creons that have come out so far. I've gotten the Deluxe Knockout with Reaper label set, and then I got Hot Shot. I got those about around July, I want to say. Uh, I think that's the last Transformers. I'm thinking, yeah, that's last, no, wait, I got Fall of Cybertron, Shockwave, and Prime. Now, everyone hates on that Prime, because it costs so much and it's so small, but I got mine for free, so I like it. It's a fun toy. <laughs> I've been fiddling with it this whole time. So. Free, free's always the best. Oh, yes. Now, speaking of off-topic, there is, I've got some Voltron and Power Ranger stuff. But the two main things I want to bring up are my Gutukuru Noriko Takaya 
She is the main character from an anime known as Aim from the Top Gunbuster. And I got lucky in getting one of those from a TFW member. I paid cheaper than retail. She still sent me. Nice. She retailed for about 130 bucks, And she cost me about 117 so nice. hey, I'll take that. And the last thing I got, which I even stayed up all morning to make sure I met the FedEx man so he would make sure I got this statue, is the 1 7th scale Tony version Megarine Luca statue. It is a statue. <laughs> Your Luca statue you've been my, talking about forever. My Luca statue. The statue I've been waiting months to buy. And it's utterly gorgeous in person. I love this thing. And it's the centerpiece of a shelf I've made. And it was worth it. The, all the $100 I paid for it. It was fantastic. It's, can, that's can, the last thing I got. Can you comb its hair? No, it's a statue. You can't comb its hair. You can't change its clothes. It's partial. No. Well, actually, because of the Japanese, he told me the skirt comes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to bring up. Now out. we and now now the mystery unfolds. <laughs> Apparently, the the figure it comes in half, and you can take the skirt off and you put it back together. <laughs> I, no, I was, Japan. Remember, you didn't like the Thundercracker mold when I when I was over there. I, I, it's not that I didn't like it. It's just it was very. Fiddly in his transformation, but um, I've got it down. Okay. Uh, if if you're not familiar with the old Seeker uh, masterpiece Seeker mold, this this version is far less fiddly than the, uh, than the uh, previous version, in my opinion. To me, the first transformation was actually more fiddly, but I've gotten used to it now. I love yeah. the new mold. I he, think it's fantastic. He just kind of. I, I like the new updates that they did. I, the, you don't have those uh, big uh, things that hang off, the like the, the tail fins that hang back. Yeah, the scabbard look. I, I don't like that, um, and they finally got rid of that. Um, it's just a little more a little more refined. I just love the way they they fixed it up. The funny thing is, this design has actually existed since two thousand five. Because it was the original intent until they brought in the Macross designer to redesign it. Hmm. And he decided uh, it should look more like a real jet than like a giant yep. robot that it was designed after. Right. And then afterwards, they're like, "Oh, wait a minute! We should have did that the first uh, to begin with." So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I still love my MP03 mold. It's still fun. Well, um, I guess I'll. Uh, Move on to my ouch my wallet. Um, I'll talk about the uh, the actual transformer related items first, and then uh, move on to the non transformer. Um, actually, here lately, as 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 many of you know, um, I've been kind of on a on a brave kick. So uh, they're kind of related to transformers, but not. Uh, they're not transformers, rather. Um, but actually, uh, I do plan on a future episode. We will have a Brave episode. We will talk about Brave because uh, they are significant in the Transformer. Uh, I'm ready for that episode. Uh, line. Um, I've, I'm talking to uh, Archie Boy of uh, TFW 2005. He is a uh, a big Brave collector, and uh, he has agreed to come on the show. Um, and I'm going to talk to a couple others that are uh, knowledgeable about Braves, and uh, we'll have a. A brave blowout episode. Uh, don't know exactly when that will be, but uh, we will have it. But uh, my first uh, Transformer-related item is actually, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> a few weeks back we were talking about the uh, uh, the Collectors Club uh, subscription service and how I was debating on whether or not to pay the subscription fee when, in fact, I only wanted two figures and I wanted um, the Ultra Mammoth. And the uh, the the G2 Prime or the Scourge. Well, I already have the G2 Prime mold, and I'm like, well, why don't I just get a big convoy? Uh, and there he is, big convoy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so instead of paying the exorbitant price for the uh, for the uh, Ultra Mammoth, uh, yeah, the Ultra Mammoth and everything, I paid fifty bucks for this shipped all the way from Korea. 
So, yeah, it's like $25 for the toy and then $25 shift. And, yes, you can raise his tail for poop. Um, <laughs> that mold is uh, so much fun. Yeah, he's, he's pretty awesome. I, I love the fact that you can pull the uh, thing there. And then the uh, you can pull on the ears and uh, make the tusks yeah. go up. And uh, I am receiving a phone call, so you guys want to talk. Bad podcasting. Oh. <laughs> I shall talk about Common Rider for the next three hours. Start it up. Let, let's get working on Wizard. I still have to get those videos from you. Uh, we gotta figure out that drop off. Magic, 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 show time. I, I, I can add in a, a, an uh, opposite of ouch my wallet. I've been selling some of my uh, Energon, Cybertron, and Armada figures. I'm currently gained sixty five dollars. Excellent. Yeah, from selling. I sold Scorponok, Vector Prime, and uh, Mirage so far. Nice. I just got a bunch of old are stuff. Are you gonna put that? Them. Are you gonna put that back into your collection, or are you yeah, just it's gonna... being revested right back in, pretty much? Cool. Uh, figuring I'm gonna, I'm finally gonna get me a freaking purple T Rex Megatron. I have. I don't have. You don't one have that. And I'm tired of not having one. So. I have all. I forgot all my Beast Wars toys in my wallet. Oh yeah. Oh. He just bought like a whole bunch of them. Yeah. And I remind you. See. Glad I brought yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah, I got a almost complete Beast Wars Ultra Class Optimus Primal. I've got Rat Trap. I got Pterosaur, Scorponok, Inferno. I got a huge chunk of the show cast for like 110 ships. Wow. Send Inferno over here so he can get rid of all the other ants. He'll take them away to his other queen. Burn, Maximals! Burn in the fires of Inferno! <laughs> <laughs> for the royalty. For the royalty. Um. Also, uh, we'll move on with my uh, after my wallet. Um, this is uh, transformer related, but it is technically not a transformer because it's not the transformer version of it. Uh, but um, uh, G1 transformer uh, Sky Gary was uh, Death Gary Gun. Yes, he was reissued as Death Gary Gun. Uh, in the Brave series. And yes, he does still come with his little MicroMaster. Uh, so it's pretty awesome. He turns into like a, uh, a spaceship that like carries things. So, but, uh, but, uh, the space he, he, yeah, he is very bricktastic. Uh, pr bricktastic. Um, it's like there's like no articulation uh, aside from like the hands go up and down, but um, articulation. Yeah. <laughs> Rat, uh, uh, Articulation's overrated. If you love G1, you'll love these guys. And a lot of Brave figures are just like this. He's a he's a super cool uh, figure and got him cheap from BBTS. And uh, I was kind of spoiled. Uh, Insane Galvatron's out of my wallet. I uh, got him one for his birthday, which is coming up on uh, in early November. Does so, he know? Uh, yeah, I already gave it to him because um, since I, I live, live in the same house with him, it's a little hard to hide it from him. So. <laughs> I got two questions about Brave. When are you going to get a Mike Sounders, and when are you going to get a Captain Shark? Uh, they're actually low on my priority list, uh, believe it or not. Um, Come on, it's Mike Sounders. He's the American robot. <laughs> well, um, I do have two figures that are on the way. Uh, actually, three figures that are on the way. Uh, I've worked out deals for them. I just have not received them yet. Actually... Uh, two of them, I'll, I still need to pay for them, but I, but I've agreed to, to purchase them from another board member. And those two figures uh, are uh, uh, Tri Bomber from Mike Gain, uh, mm -hmm. and it's a vintage version, and also a vintage Mint and Box uh, Dino Geist. Very nice. Uh, I've uh, got I'm getting that on the way, um, and also I've already paid for, and I should receive it tomorrow. So I may talk about it on the next podcast. Um, I have a mint and box stickers unapplied hear you, uh, which is uh, the uh, uh, what's the G one? Uh, he's a re uh, recolor and I guess a retool of the G one figure. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, stealth. Uh, it's not a stealth bomber. Um, 
Uh, the name escapes me right now. Hold on. Is it Die Atlas or no, uh, Jeff Taurus? That's uh, someone else. Or is it no? That's Doug Bases Grandis. Um. Uh, Sonic Bomber. Sonic there Bomber. We go. <laughs> yes, uh, the G1 <laughs> figure uh, Sonic Bomber. Uh, that is uh, uh, that was remolded and recolored uh, in Brave as a uh, Hear You, and I have one of those Minton Box coming, and yeah. I can't wait. Those are very rare. You don't see those every day on eBay, and uh, uh, especially the Dino Geist. Uh, Dino Geist is running me about two hundred, so <laughs> that tells you how 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 hard hard to get they are. Oh yes. But uh, Always can get expensive. Really. Uh, moving on, uh, uh, finally, 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 after about three and a half weeks of uh, waiting from Ami Ami, uh, Big Volfog uh, showed yes. up. Yes. Uh, the Super Robot Shogokin uh, version of him. Uh, no, it does not transform, but he's like really super poseable, and I like him. Uh, like this uh, spinning helicopter blade can actually come off, and you've got like a regular uh, helicopter blade you can put on. You've got, of course, different fists and hands you can put on him. And, uh, of course, the head moves. I mean, he's just like, that's the the uh, the hallmark, of, I guess, of uh, the Super Robot Chagokins is the, uh, the enhanced posability of them. And what do you think like, of the line the, as a whole, the Super Robot Chagokin line? Uh, this is actually my first foray into the line and probably will be my last. Uh, I'd... You know, I just wanted to get one because a vintage uh, DX version of uh, Big Volfog here uh, is quite expensive as well. Uh, he's ru he's also running about two hundred dollars uh, for the vintage version that actually transforms. Uh, so uh, I figured this guy here he's roughly deluxe sized uh, and shipped from Japan via SAL. I got him for thirty five dollars, which is roughly what you'd pay for like a United Deluxe. Right. Uh, yeah. But uh, I like it, but I prefer my figures to actually transform. Um, he, he's, he's just a good stand-in, I guess, <laughs> until I can't afford to get a, a, a big Volfog, uh, the X version. And um, also I, I picked up, I'm not going to pull it out of the case because he's kind of like, you know, in the, in the corner of it. Uh, I got a Masterpiece King X Kaiser, uh, finally. Ooh. It came in. Uh, I really, uh, I got to preface this. I really, really love the figure. Great figure, uh, and it's typical to car design. Uh, one problem, however, is that um, upon his first transformation, uh, the left leg of X Kaiser, which is a little tiny robot that actually fits inside of uh, the uh, the uh, King Loader uh, to form King X Kaiser. Uh, the left leg has a pin in it that uh, is held in with a very strong spring. Well, that spring is so strong that it pops a pin out, and it will not stay in. Uh, so I've had to actually remove the spring, put it in the box, and just put the pin in there. And you can hold the figure and do like that, and the leg just dangle, 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 dangle. Wow. And it's it's really, uh, uh, that's that's disappointing, but overall, the figure is very nice. I'm not disappointed with the figure as a whole. Um, it just, uh, uh, that, it's just a, like a little mold uh, or design flaw. Um, you can display him, you know, in, in any of those modes, and he still looks nice. I mean, even though that I took that spring out, he still transforms fine. Uh, still stands, although he's not as sturdy as he would be if that spring was in there. But uh, yeah, it's really a gorgeous figure. It is. It is super gorgeous. Uh, I did attempt to get a, uh, a Dragon Kaiser masterpiece, Dragon Kaiser, to go with him. However, uh, the two hundred and fifty dollar price tag on uh, BBTS for the one lone figure that they had of him was a bit steep. And by the time I was getting ready to make an offer. Uh, to somebody to buy some figures that I had, so I would have the cash to do it. Somebody actually bought that toy, so, oh. so it is now gone, and I can't find any on eBay or anything. Uh, I've been looking on uh, Yahoo Japan auctions, but uh, another wow. site I would suggest is Mandarake, but you'd have to know the Japanese lettering to even find the thing on there. But 
Uh, Try Monitor Arcade. Uh, well, maybe if you can uh, send me some links after the yeah, show. Yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can find. And everything. Uh, but uh, last but not least, uh, certainly, he finally came. And I'm going to reveal this rather slowly on camera, so... Uh, play the yeah. thing. You Y'all already know what thing. I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gal Gygar with the uh, Goldie M. Hammer and Goldie Marg. Love uh, it. Love this toy. As you can see, compared to my head, he is ginormous. Um, and he is just an absolute gorgeous figure. Love this figure. Um, and also, uh, side note with Gal Gygar, um, if you're interested in it uh, tonight, actually... Well, no, I'm sorry, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, should be the release of Gal Gygar, the complete series, on DVD. Uh, it's be, it'll be available on uh, on uh, Amazon and I Best Buy. Uh, $34, I believe, is what the price is for it. Really? For the whole series, yes. Uh, now, uh, a little caveat about that is that the... Uh, the first season is dubbed into English. Uh, you can actually watch the entire first season in English. However, uh, um, they did not dub the second season. Second season is entirely in Japanese with subtitles. You want to know why that's happened? Uh, because of, uh, I believe, Macross. Uh, they were doing something with Macross, or no, it might have been Gundam. And uh, also, they were going to bring Gal Gagar 4 TV. It was going to air on American TV, but... It never happened, so they didn't bother dubbing the rest of it. So we almost got Gal Gadot toys in America, and it sucks. Yes, uh, that would have been really, really. I would have been if if I'd known about it and and everything back then. Uh, I would have been all over it, uh, especially with the uh, 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 Geki uh, Ryujin uh, figures and stuff like that. They're mm -hmm. They're some of the best, I believe, in Brave, in my opinion. Yes, I really uh, want an Inuyu, and I can't remember the name of the other one. Um, wow. uh, I'd, I'd like to have a King Jader as well. Uh, they're amazing. Um, and also, what's great about them is that they've got uh, near Beast Wars uh, articulation mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of the figures. Uh, Gal Gagar himself, that huge figure I just held up, has got amazing uh, articulation for such a large figure. Um now, I mean, he's no by no means masterpiece or anything like that. You can't do him, have him doing the squats or reading the newspaper. But, um, yeah, he, he's got decent articulation. He's, he's definitely by no means a brick. Um, and well worth the price I paid for him. Uh, Goldie Mart, he's, he's nice. I mean, he's he's actually more of a brick than uh, Gal Gagar himself. But seeing as you how he's... him for the hammer. Yeah, the hammer is pretty much what he's there for. Uh, and seeing as how I got him shipped from uh, Korea for like $35, I, I'm not really, really uh, tore up about that. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, I know I've said that about Guy Gygar, but uh, I did pick up a few more things. Uh, you know, before I mentioned that... Uh, uh, I got the first. I got like four of them, and I, f I picked up the remaining three. Uh, Dia Robos. Ah, those. I yes. didn't hear about those. Medical uh, Rex. They are very, very, very nice figures. I, I love them, um, and I do have a review of them up on YouTube. Uh, check it out uh, for all of you who are listening. Uh, it's on. It should be on the Geek Existence channel. Or you can just type in Dia Robo. It's like one of the only reviews that comes up for Dia Robos. Um, and I do apologize ahead of time. There's a couple places where the uh, video is actually cropped, and I'm holding the figure and I'm showing it off, but it's off screen. Well, whenever I recorded it, it was on screen, but whenever it was encoded, it cropped it out. And <laughs> <laughs> so it's it wasn't my fault. <laughs> um, but that's uh, that's my ouch my wallet this uh, for the last probably every bit of three weeks. Uh, so I mean I know it's a lot of stuff, but like I said, a lot of it's I've I've actually been waiting on for well like the uh, the big Volfog I've been waiting on it almost a month. Uh, and did you, want, did you use Sal shipping? Yeah, I did uh, because it's you know it was cheap. 
uh, EMS would have pushed his pr uh, the price for that little figure there uh, well over fifty bucks. Yeah, and because... I'm like, I kind I, I kind of knew exact uh, I kind of knew that it was going to be a small figure to begin with, so uh, I didn't want I didn't want to feel guilty about paying fifty bucks for a non transforming figure that you know I'm not even sure I want to collect a whole line of. So you sure you're not going to go get the whole command center with all of them? Hush. <laughs> I just want the. Uh, I've, I've actually, actually, looked, at, I've right actually looked at that. And, 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 and then the uh, the D style uh, Gal Gaga arm. I'm actually considering it as well. Hmm, who told you about that one? I don't know. Some idiot. Hey, I don't even off. care about it, and I want it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Natsume, uh, you're uh, viewing the channel. Has there been any uh, comments or questions yet? Yes, ninety percent of it is me and Ed Sidebird, and we're talking to my friend and former classmate uh, T M Blake O Nine. Uh, he he posted first thing. He said uh, Kotor, Knights of the Old Republic, uh, was his favorite game of all time. So you're not alone, smiley face. And uh, Sidebird replied with, "It is very fun. I'm glad I bought it." And so we had a conversation about that a little bit on the on the comments. <laughs> you hijack the comments with video game talk. Yeah. Um, well, uh, if we do have any other listeners out there that are live right now, uh, please feel free to uh, go into the chat box there uh, on YouTube and uh, uh, ask questions about anything. If you have any comments or questions about what we're talking about, um, like I said, uh, you know, we just had a little lengthy discussion here about brave some brave figures. If you want to know their uh, relative to uh, Transformers and why they are important, uh, feel free to ask, and we may discuss that. Um, we'll move on to our next topic, the uh, uh, the news segment, and I believe Insane Galvatron is <laughs> back. I am back. back. Yay. Yes. He's back in the saddle. Uh, do you want to talk about your Ouch My Wallet? Um, sure. Before we move on, all right, uh, go ahead, and uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to take a brief respite, but I'll be right back. You guys keep going. Okay, well, my out's my wallet. Um, I only have as much as I do because it's been quite a while since we've done an out's my wallet. Um, we had Gary Chalk on one week, and I think before that I was off a week, and then we had several weeks we didn't record. So um, it's a big list, but like I said, it's not like I bought it all at once. I only have three things Transformers related. I, my Masterpiece Thundercracker showed up. I think that's like the oldest thing on this list. I uh, ordered it from ToysRush.com, caught it in stock one day. Uh, I got the, uh, on eBay, I got the MicroMaster Sports Car Patrol. It's the one that has the Lamborghini, the Trans Am, and the DeLorean. Very nice. And then uh, our very own Duran got me an early birthday present. Uh, which this is not really a Transformer, but it's Transformer related. It's uh, the Brave Def Gary gun, which, which was Sky the Gary. yeah it's Sky Gary reuse. So I got that. Uh, then besides that, I got a buttload of uh, TMNT toys. Uh, found a seller on eBay he was selling a bunch of old uh, turtle figures. I uh, already had all the classics, so I had the main four turtles. But he had a bunch of other characters I had as a kid that I wanted to to reacquire. All sealed on the card, but the cards were cut off the top, and the back of the card was peeled away, so you just had, like, plain cardboard, but they were still sealed to that. Uh, I don't know if these were, like, water damage and he'd salvage them or what, uh, but the packages were destroyed, but they were still sealed. I got the Mutagen Man, Shredder, Bebop, Toka, Razar, Krang, uh, from him, and then another auction, I got Splinter and April. So I've got nearly my old, uh, you know, vintage turtle collection back uh, from what I had as a kid. Uh, and then I picked up at a comic book store. Uh, I know I mentioned in a previous house my wallet, the Classics Leonardo, I picked up at Toys R Us. Well, I got the other three at a comic book store. So I now have all four of those. And my Donatello is Derpatello. He yes. has the wonky eyes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, was the, it was the best one that was available to me. You know, The one had an eye that was like way around the side. I got the one that was not quite as bad. Yeah. Um, I still got to get Michelangelo and Donatello to finish those classic turtles. But uh, the only other thing I got that's also not Transformers related uh, was I finally managed to pick up an Iron Man uh, six-inch Mark One. 
So I now have all the Iron Man armors except for the seven, which they never made a toy of, and that's ass. Uh, speaking of Ninja Turtles, since you spoke of them, I'm also speak of the ones I got now. I got. We can see one. You can. Yeah, on the front of your TV there, oh. bottom bottom right oh. of the video. Uh, that must be the classic swing though. I got uh, vintage. I've got a metal head, a Krang, Bebop, Rocksteady, and a Shredder. Recently. Those are very fun. Were those they're vintage, cost. or yes. were they from the 2003 series, or? No, they're vintage, and they cost me nothing. I got them for free. Oh, that's better than the deal I got. And they have all the parts, I believe. Hmm. Would you get anything else? Uh, no, that was my whole list. That was it. Sorry, I guess I should have said that's it. Uh, just all she wrote. Yeah, and Duran is back. If it wasn't for all those turtles, the list wouldn't have been as long as it was. But those all came in one package. Still a good deal. Yeah, I think for all those sealed turtles, it was like eighty bucks shipped. And I mean, yeah, that's for, not too bad. For twenty-year-old figures mint on card, yeah. that's not bad at all. No. Um, the, are you talking about the April O'Neil and the Splinter and stuff you got? Well, those were the ones I got loose. So the, the sealed ones like the Mutant Man, the Shredder, the Bebop, the Krang. I think it worked out to like 12 bucks a figure or something like that. Uh, which Krang is it? Is it the... It's the, the, the original one, the small one with the little mech legs underneath. Yeah, that's the one I got as well. I would li love to have the one with the big body like was in the cartoon. Shredder, where's my body? I totally want one of the uh, the new Krangs that uh, looks like the businessman. That way I can put him on my uh, computer table where my computer table is in this place. Uh, I will set it in this place on that place, on my computer table in this place. You will set it on the table that has your computer sitting on the table so that it will be on the table with the computer on the table. Yes. If they've not watched the new Turtles cartoon, they won't get that. And if they have not watched the new Turtles cartoon, then uh, shame on them. Yes, it's excellent. I actually watched the episode we missed on uh, nickmetalhead.com. I was going to ah. say, I heard that it's on, on nick.com. I have to go there and watch it. I haven't been home for three days, so... It's excellent. Yeah. So it is good? I haven't had a chance to check yes. it out, but I, I'm glad I watched, to hear it's good. When the first episode came on, we watched it like on TV, and I, I fell in love instantly. Like, oh, this is one of my new favorite shows. <laughs> And Gar Convoy is holding up a Voltron. Is that the one that uh, you took pictures of on uh, Facebook? No, this is the one I haven't taken photos of. It. It's the Treadmasters 1998 release that was sold as individual lines on card. The other one I have is the Panache Play one, which I took photos of earlier. I would go grab it, but it's on the other side of the room, and I'm connected to wires to my computer, so I can't go grab it. Uh, the one that you took pictures of on Facebook, I had that one as a kid. And I actually, uh, it was in my collection of, uh, original collection of Transformers whenever I picked it up and got back into collecting uh, uh, back in the early 2000s. And ah. uh, uh, I went through it and I, I actually had it on display there for about a year or so. And then I, uh, I kind of deemed it as not essential to my collection. And I sold it for about 150 bucks on eBay. Yes. So. My, I have, I got all this in a box. I got this Voltron in my hand. I got the Panache Place Voltron, all practically complete. This is like the shield and the keys, and it came with all the villain characters, but two. I've got all these Ninja Turtles in a box with the ship. Nice. Yeah, I got a really good deal thanks to Emerald Beacon. Hmm. All right. Well, let's move on to our uh, news segment. Um, Let's see here. I guess we'll uh, let's start off with the biggest news of them all. Yay! Uh, yes. I think every Transformer fan is jumping for joy about this, except Not for uh, except for a few people that hate G One, but they can uh, they can all burn for all I care. Um, <laughs> the largest Transformer of all time uh, has been re uh, has been announced for reissue uh, coming in February and March, and that w that one of course is Fortress Maximus. Uh, and uh, I do believe that uh, uh, CapturedPrey.com has got the uh, the cheapest price on them at three. Oh, they finally listed it. Yes, uh, he's listed it at three hundred and twenty dollars. Ten bucks uh, cheaper than BBTS. Uh, BBTS is around three twenty-five to three thirty, I believe. Yeah, and, that's not uh, mine. Pre-ordered. 
and also I believe uh, TF Source has got around 325. But uh, actually, TF Source is 350, but they got free shipping because it's over 150. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, you're got you guys have any thoughts on that? Yes, I have a lot. I just <laughs> I'm excited for this reissue because a lot of people may know that I got my Fortress Maximus body at flea market for four dollars in 2007. So I've been in the market for parts for years. I've been unable to get a Cerebros, period, because thanks to third parties keep making spikes and want to kill them. But now I can buy this Fort Max and just give me some parts for it. Mine will be complete. An actual reissue just to use the parts? Yeah. Think about it. Cerebros alone goes for sale for $200 on eBay. Each ramp costs $100. I'm missing those parts and guns, so... Mine will be complete. So it's mm. worth it to me. Eh, yeah, but I mean, if you're already buying a complete Fort Max, <laughs> then why bother? <laughs> now I have two Fort Max. Two well, what I, what I would do is I, I would sell that vintage Fort Max and buy two uh, reissue Fort Maxes, keep uh, one open and keep the other one sealed. Yeah, I would do that, but that Fort Max is very special to me, so I couldn't part with it. it yeah, there's a story one. to that. Yeah, $3 yeah, Fort Max, I, you got to keep it. That's a like a bond between me and my dad, so I, I just couldn't bring myself to sell it, oh, even though it your, would make sense. Your dad bought that for you? Or? Yeah, he was there. With, me and him go to flea markets now because of that. So that's kind of a very sentimental thing to me now. Hmm. Awkward. <laughs> Awkward. Anybody else have uh, thoughts on Fort Max? I think I really, really want one. I think the likelihood of me having three hundred fifty dollars next March is probably about as likely as me having three hundred fifty dollars right now, which is not very good. <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, the uh, the good thing, good news about that is, is that you have uh, about six months to uh, a lot for it, and also remember that there is a uh, income tax return. This is true. <laughs> you don't file. Don't it. <laughs> you tax evader, you. I don't make enough money to have to file taxes. <laughs> or do they take it out of your check? I don't have a job currently. Oh, okay. Well, I guess you don't then. Yeah. And I was a tutor before that, and I didn't, still didn't make enough money. Uh, so, oh. not to disrespect you, Michael, but I want to go back to you know, guard convoy real quick. Uh, the Fort Max you have is he complete enough to at least put in city mode, or is he missing uh, his ramps? He's missing the two arm ramps. He has everything else. It's okay. My Fort Max is missing hog, both main guns, the radar dish, and three rows and two main ramps, and okay, one side well, cannon. Then that one needs to be in robot mode. And the reissue you can display in city mode. Yeah, that's what I'm probably going to do. Just give Cerebros and Spike to that one for robot mode. Well, mine has Spike. Mine came with Spike. I just you don't have Cerebros? Cerebros. Right. And the only one for sale at BotCon cost $300. Wow. You can buy Dang. the reissue for that now. Yeah, so might as well just buy the reissue for parts. When you was know, the last time you paid $300 for head? God, we can't good, talk about that. <laughs> That's illegal. <laughs> well, there was that one time in Taiwan. <laughs> well, there was a time I paid three hundred bucks, but it was so good that uh, she gave me the three hundred back and paid me three hundred for the pleasure of doing it. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but you know, back on this topic. This is a family-friendly podcast. You know, Drawn. Um, you know, he started it. Uh, remember the comic store here locally that had a Fort Max uh, with just a few a few of his guns, but had a lot of stuff missing. Yes. Uh, that they also had a Cerebros that they'd gotten at another point in time that they still had, and they said mm -hmm. they won't, don't want to price it until they find the head to put them together, because they knew where the head was and didn't have the body. Later they acquired the body, and then they don't know where the head is, but they know <laughs> it's somewhere in the new store. They when they packed and moved, and so I, I was offering to I was wanting to buy it, and I'm like, well, how much you want for it? And they're like, well, we're not going to sell it until we find the head, and now this reissue has come out. It totally has tanked the value of that thing. How much yeah. do you think we could get it for now? I, I sincerely doubt uh, he'd probably let it go for less than three hundred. Honestly, when, when, when no, knowing that knowing that store owner. Yeah, but knowing there's a reissue where you can get a mint complete one for three hundred, surely he'd have to let that go cheaper. 
Uh, it's possible, but he, he'll probably, you, you got to understand, you know him. I mean, he uh -huh. will sit there and he will argue with you. Oh, this thing is vintage, though. I mean, you're talking about a reissue. This thing is vintage. You know, uh, yeah. I'll be I, like, I, I I'll know. be like, here's a C note. I'll to give you a C note for it. it he, he might take that if if you, if if you pull it up and show him, uh, you know, pre-orders for the for the reissue coming up. Um, yeah, he might do that. Um, let's move on uh, our next uh, topic. Uh, anybody else have any thoughts about Fort Max before we move on? Uh, not... I, I think I'm going to have to cancel <laughs> my BBTS pre-order and go with Capture Gray. They're, they're cheaper. Yeah. About 10, 10 bucks plus I don't have to pay shipping because they're just yeah, down the road. Go pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, also uh, announced our Masterpiece uh, cassette uh First uh, set. Sets, yeah, the first sets. Well, actually, there's two sets. There's Rumble and uh, uh, Buzzsaw, and then uh, I think Ravage and Frenzy. Frenzy yes. Yeah. They got the names of the little humanoid bots backwards. Incorrect. They got incorrect. We're not going to have this fight. Come on, <laughs> stop this. No, stop. Well, actually, uh, they are for release in Japan uh, initially. So. According to that, uh, they they have always been uh, uh, Rumble's red. Yeah, yeah, they've always been fear in, in Japan. Uh, it's only Hasbro's uh, shenanigans that have uh, caused the uh, the issues at shenanigans. hand. Shenanigans. Yeah, they're inconsistencies. Yeah, they're shenanigans. Next person says shenanigans gets pistol whipped in the face. Shenanigans. By a hegemon or something. I don't know. You got a pistol whip them with MP5. Guy <laughs> gas construction is a lost time. I'd rather use TFC at uh, number six. Or Hegemon. No, or I wanna be, I wanna get beaten by a vintage G one Megatron. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be hit by an Encore and you will like it. <laughs> well the TFC's a reissue, you know. But it's the original mold. No one will update. Um any other thoughts on the uh, masterpiece cassette bots? Want. Well, I think, well, some people were saying, why don't they just release Frenzy and Rumble together? That way they don't have to worry about, you know, the, the issues of names and everything. But it's that Japan. would give them the same mold. And Japan. people would feel like no, it would need to be cheaper because they're just repaints. <coughs> yeah. So they split them up and they can, they can, you know, keep the price as high as with, because each one has a different mold from the other pack. Hey, there's no confusion in Japan on what is correct. They know the answer. It's just America has to make it all confusing. Because Americans are stupid. <laughs> I resemble that remark. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm an I'm an I'm American. American. America. I'm American. American. Yeah. I'm American. I passed a place called American today. It was A M E R. I C capital I little N N. Okay. Huh. Well. Driving on the road, American. <laughs> oh, fail. Uh, Warbot Assaulter pictures are up of the uh, the cruiser mode. Uh, thoughts? I love it. Just because it reminds me of the SDF one from Macross. Uh, I personally, I think it looks like anus. Yeah, I was expecting it to look a little more like a carrier. Yeah, it looks like a space carrier. Uh, the, uh, now the jet, uh, the jet mode and the uh, the bot mode look phenomenal in my opinion, but it I wanted it to look more like a uh, aircraft carrier. That's a space aircraft carrier. Kind of like a space T-Rex. Someone to this so I can see it. Uh, let's see coming here. up. This is great podcasting right here. <laughs> We're all prepared. Yeah, nobody else gets to see it either. I Somebody, can I share my screen on here? This, I think this. I can. Screen share. I always forget about it. Oh, I can do the screen share too. Since I don't actually have a um, picture for people to see. Yeah, that'd be your job. I you think... Oh, yeah, I like that idea. I think it looks... I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It looks like a spaceship. 
Maybe that's uh, not exactly wait. the air carrier or the uh, aircraft carrier that it should look like. But so, are you guys seeing this on my screen? Am I sharing it correctly? Yes. yes. Well, as long as you're talking, we see it. Well, click on his name thing. Yeah, if you well, click on my name, to. it'll keep mine on the top. Effort. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah. I, I, I like I said, I like the jet mode and the robot mode, but the the aircraft carrier, eh. I still if, want it. I, if, I do. If, I still want it. If the arm things for the front of the carrier just slid together, and the legs slid together, so it'd be solid on top, it would have been aces better. It's just I a like big gap in the front and back. I love the way it is. I just love it. It's fantastic. Mm. I, I, like I said, I still want it, but it's just not. Not what I expected. I'm Even sorry, though G1 broadside, G1 broadside. Even though G1 broadside has no articulation, at least his carrier mode looks like a carrier. Yeah. <clears throat> but his carrier mode is why he is such a brick. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, they got to compromise. The reason triple changers aren't very don't, you know, I haven't hung out, hung around for very long is because they always have have that awkward compromise that they have to make between the two modes that ruins one of them. I don't know. I think um, Blitzwing did a really good job of incorporating all three modes without being compromised too much. Astral Train, aside from the thrusters at the back of the train, wasn't too bad. And Sandstorm was pretty decent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that uh, uh, that's something else I forgot in my house, my wallet. I picked up a G1 Sandstorm for 15 bucks. Very Only nice. missing the tail fin. Yeah. But his chrome is, like, perfect. The stickers are pretty nice, too, and the legs are not floppy. Yep. Um, uh, the first editions for uh, Transformers Prime are up for pre-order on Big Bad Toy Store. Um, you want to pull that one up, Greg? Uh, yeah, as soon as I can find it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got... Uh, the first editions are up for pre-order. Um... Anybody uh, thinking about picking any of these up? I already pre-ordered uh, Bulkhead. Blockhead. Yeah, I. Uh, I mean, I. I defended uh, Prime R.I.D. Bulkhead oh. Tooth and Nail, saying it's a perfectly fine figure, but I still think it is a perfectly fine figure. But you want the the first, the first edition. edition is better. Yes. And I'm going to get it if I can, especially now that it's becoming easily available again. I'm just going to get Bulkhead and Prime and maybe a Viacon and Zombie Cliff Jumper and then call it a day. That's all I need. <laughs> what I find unusual is everybody is unanimously agrees that the Prid Viacon is better than the first edition Viacon. And yet, I, I, at $25... It has already sold out on BBTS. Because it's a Viacon. It's yeah, sold that's, out that's again? That's the number one reason. But I will say that I like the first edition Viacon better, having seen both of them, even if I haven't, you know, touched them or whatever. And if I haven't transformed them, some people are like, oh, the, the print Viacon is, you know, much cooler. It hides the kibble a lot better. I think the... The, the first edition is just that much more accurate, and I enjoy it a lot more, and I think you can make it look like it can fit in as a jet vehicon and as a car vehicon. So, I, I like and it better. On the cartoon, they don't have that big backpack of car kibble. That's because if you move the car kibble the right way, the spoiler sits on his back and it looks like wings. Oh, okay. And it can be a jet vehicon. Well, they actually made a jet vehicon in Japan. I know. And what actually, they are making a uh, uh, a Vehicon Commander that is silver. Oh, that explains that promo for next week's episode of Prime. That must have been a first edition Vehicon with his kibble turned sideways. That's why Megatron thought he could fly. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you've seen that promo and you know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, also, uh, Masterpiece Optimus... Prime, uh, the MP10 mold, uh, is going to be released in black. Uh, if you want to find that before it's insane. Um, I'm looking for it. Which it, looks amazing. It, to me, it's just a black Optimus Prime, but you know, it does look great, I have to admit. But seeing as how I don't even have the, uh, the MP10 mold yet still, 
and probably won't for a few more weeks because um, uh, next week uh, we will be uh, at Slagacon in St. Galvatron and I and uh, I'm not 100% certain if we'll be able to depending on internet connections um, but we're going to try to uh, have Scott McNeil on the show next week um, at if, the very uh, least if he's we'll available. record an interview yeah if we can get um, him that is assuming that, uh, that that we that we can get some time with him um, it would be really awesome to have him on the show as well uh, now I'm I've got the uh, the screen up here for uh, insane Galvatron has found it the masterpiece uh, black Optimus Prime uh, discussion well it's a Decepticon this time it's scourge instead of just black convoy yeah no, that's still black thing. convoy well, yeah, I guess it's the Black Convoy as far as he's evil, like from R.I.D. It's not just the... Because a lot of the newer Optimus Primes have been repainted in black or still an Autobot. He was just in black. Yeah, and black and Prime back death back. mode or something, yeah. And that goes all the way back to Black Nucleon Quest Convoy. Yeah. Yes. This goes back like the Scourge, though. He's got red windows. He's a Decepticon. Teal, teal highlights. So will he have the trailer? Yeah, that's what sold me on Last I heard, no trailer. They made him a Decepticon. Because usually they usually they just make them black and stick Autobot symbols on them. And it's like I have no need for a black prime that's not evil. Yeah. Although, I, um, on a somewhat related note, I would love to have the Bay Optimus Prime. Uh -huh. Which one? one? The green one or the gray one? Yeah. I like the green one for being oddball, but the gray one because it looks like him when he died. Well, you want you want Bay uh, MP10? Ooh. Now, don't give him any ideas now. <laughs> um, also, uh, shattered glass MP10. <laughs> uh, masterpiece. Uh, speaking of uh, the MP10, the masterpiece Optimus Prime, uh, it has also appeared on U.S. shelves. Uh, actually, it is. It's pretty much saturated the U.S. From what I understand now, or the problem uh, getting is close to it. A collector in my area is sending them all to other collectors in the state, so my area supply is gone. Yeah, uh, that's that's the unfortunate thing with uh, them being. T uh, b or, I'm sorry, Toys R Us exclusives. Uh, you know the uh, availability of them is limited to only one store, which is not a very common store in many areas. And whenever you factor that with the uh, the fact that that. Uh, Hoarders, or not hoarders, but uh, scalpers, love to pick it up and move it on to other uh, venues such as eBay for uh, one and a half times the price or more. Um, it gets kind of discouraging. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm they missing uh, Grimlock and Rodimus because Toys R Us sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up buying my Grimlock off of Paper at the Toy Store. About three months after it came out, because I never even found it. Then that was back before my Toys R Us decided to close and move 35 minutes away. Wow. Now the only uh, the only way I was able to get uh, a uh, Toys R Us reissue Optimus Prime uh, back in the day uh, was I never got to see one on shelves, but fortunately a, a former Gen 1 TF. Uh, a member uh, known as Hunger, uh, yeah, I see Roth. <laughs> uh, G1TF uh, member known as Hunger. He uh, he lived in Chicago and he was able to pick me up when it cost. And I'm for forever grateful to him because that was actually the first Optimus Prime I ever got to actually own and transform with my, as my own. Now I had I had the uh, the 2002 New Year Convoy, but I never opened it because. Uh, one day I was hoping to meet uh, Peter Cullen and get him to, to autograph it, and that I did back in uh, 2006 at Bacon. And that was, that was really awesome. Well, uh, I believe it is time for... Well, unless I have a you guys can think here. Of it. Oh, yes. Did, did we talk about this at all? No, the uh, anime-colored uh, Devastator. Uh, that was that slipped my, uh, my attention. Uh, yeah, I had forgotten about it as well, and then I just stumbled across it. Yeah. Guard convoy is being perverted now. <laughs> I can't see his window. I've got mine maximized, so I can look. You need to look at this. You need to look at this. Oh my goodness! 
<laughs> it's Krang and Raft. Well, Krang is a uh, pedophile now. Yes. What? What is not Smite? <laughs> Looks like she was leaving, but then she came back to see what all the fuss was about. <laughs> um, all Wait, right. Be uh, perverted. She'll come back again. <laughs> Anime color devastator. Uh, me like oh, that's it. cool looking. Yeah, I'm. I want to see something other than this Photoshop. I want to see like actual product because I'm not sure if that's the right shade of purple. I don't know if they did some stuff with the. It, it just doesn't look a whole lot like the cartoon purple. Something seems off. I can't, I think it's a little too dark. I do like the fact that the head looks a little more like the cartoon, mm -hmm. and I like the fact that Mixmaster has the purple mixing drum, which I was kind of disappointed that neither Hercules or Giant got correct. Because in the cartoon, Actually, you can purple. get the uh, Rage of Hercules set, and it comes it, with the purple one. Yes, it comes with purple drum. Yeah, I've got Giant already bought and paid for, though. I need a purple drum for my mix master. But those aren't tentacles, Guard Convoy. <laughs> I see where that one's going. That's what she said. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody uh, have any other uh, news uh, that they might want to bring up? that they can think of that might be pertinent over the last week or two? New Creon things. New what Creon things. What well, are those things. I need a link. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, they just, they're like a Taiwan Family Mart exclusive. Like, they're oversized Creons that have flashlights built into them. What? I've seen Lego minifigs like that. Uh, I'm going to get a picture in just a second. Uh, there's a link at the top of our chat here. I left and came back so I get my picture to work so I don't have There any. we go. Here, I'll copy and paste it for you. Oh, never mind, you got it. Phone danglers. And there's a video. There's always a video. All the Creons have lots of videos and they're great videos. Yeah, I always love them for the for the Creo sets where they come in and build stuff. I think our mascot for today is Crank. Oh my goodness, he's Megatron's head on Sideswap's body. That makes no sense. Why? It's just like Fall of Cybertron. You can customize them. <laughs> huh, total except you're not me. limited in colors except for the fact that the colors are pre-painted. Oh, there's a Sideswap next to a regular Creon Optimus. No, they're quite... quite I knew their, be their weapons looked weird. Like, they were too thick. So why, why are these exclusive over there? I'd buy one of these. Oh, what about that clear so blue bumblebee? Family Mart's. Uh, where where are they? Are they like in Japan or Korea? Uh, Japan, or? Taiwan, that area. Oh. Like I know for Vocaloid recently they did a whole bunch of exclusives for Family Mart, and then they did Transformers ones as well. That's what that was. An animated little the Activator Skywarp and Ramjet. No, wait a minute. Go back, right there. Go back. Go back. There? No, go back. There. Now, if you had Optimus Prime <laughs> and you had that, that center glow there, it would look like the Matrix. I would totally would. get one of those. There is an Optimus one. Yeah, but it's not lit up, though. No, it's a side swipe lit up. Yeah, he doesn't want to use an LED. Side swipe him as Prime. And I, I take it you can uh, power them with your iPod or your iPhone? No, I think they have little batteries. You can just you just have. Yeah, there's them. batteries in the head. There's batteries. In, there's a light in the head, and there's a hole in the chest that lights up. Hmm. Interesting. That's oh, as big as a Legends toy. There it is, next to Legends Motor Breath. Yeah. AKA okay, Motor Master. Yes, but it's just Motor Breath on the package. I know, but Bye. Motor Master. <laughs> Okay, um, let's move on to our final subject and final discussion uh, area of the night, uh, the Transformers Prime uh, episode discussion. A uh, little bit of a uh, spoiler warning here. If you have not watched the latest episode, uh, Transformers Prime Hard Knocks, um, you, will be dis uh, you will be spoiled by um, what you, uh, you hear from here on out. So... You will be spoiled. If you listen to this, you will be spoiled. Spoiler alert! <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Spoiler! Uh, May, you want to give us a brief overview of uh, Hard Knocks episode? Um, I, can, I can sure try and make sure I hope I remember it all from the 
from when I watched it right before this. Um, all right, so we start off, and we know that we have to find the four icon relics left. Um, well, they already found one, so three left, um, and they're the all part of the the keys, right? Yeah, and so they're for reviving Cybertron somehow, some way. We don't know how or why, or why they weren't mentioned before in anything. Um, we just know that Optimus Prime went into the Matrix with Alpha Trion with the sword, the the thing that we haven't talked about yet because we haven't talked about the previous episodes. Um, but anyway, so there's three left. Uh, episode starts off, Knockout wants to get in his good graces with uh, Megatron again. He steals Soundwave's uh, relic with the, that emits sound waves, ironically. And he goes ahead and he knocks out <clears throat> RC and Bumblebee and steals one of the relics. That was all literally like in the first five minutes of the episode. It was over really quick and... Knockout got back in his sort of good graces with Megatron. Megatron was sort of skeptical. Skepti skeptical, he thought, you know, maybe the Autobots set this up. Why is it the same shape and everything as the other relic that I almost got from Optimus? What, what is it, the connection between these relics, or is it a fake that the Autobots set up? So Knockout convinces him that it is a real relic, that it's not something the Autobots just made a trap. They're like, oh, what if we just copy this, and, you know, Megatron could take that. Because Megatron doesn't know there are four keys. Yes, Megatron doesn't, doesn't even know what they're know what the other one is. Yeah, he just knows that there's more relics and there's more things to decode. Donatello um, face palms at this. <laughs> <laughs> and he still has a uh, prime arm. Yes, yes, he's got his wonderful purple yellow arm. Do yeah. we know what prime he took that from? I mean, no. Not I think I want to pretend it was Sentinel. Just because Sentinel's a jerk. <laughs> well, technically, assuming he died with the same body that he did in War for Cybertron, and Sentinel is instead indeed Sentinel Zeta Prime, no, it's not the same Prime. Assuming. You guys are having too much fun. Okay, so that's the first five minutes of the episode. The next ten minutes of the episode is them going after the third relic, which uh, Starscream goes ahead, he finishes refining like one to do two doses of the red energon um, into an actual usable liquid form. Um, so he has super speed. And let's see, who is it? So Bulkhead and our buddy Smokescreen, who we haven't talk talked about yet, uh, get sent out to get the next relic. So both Optimus and Soundwave, for some reason, they're always decoding them at the same exact time. And they're both increasing speed at the same rate. So they have the same learning you know, curve. <laughs> um, but they both decode the second one at the same time. So they send out um, Smokescreen and Bulkhead to recover this one. And Megatron sends out Dreadwing. Because Knockout needs to study this newest uh, relic to figure out what it is and what it's for. Um, so Dreadwing uh, goes ahead and takes on Bulkhead because Bulkhead wants to keep him busy and send Smokescreen. The uh, what do they call him? They had some really good puns in this one. Oh, Destiny's Child. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's so> <laughs> because uh, RC is, has a real bone to pick with Smokescreen for being such a kid and, and being very eager about going Can into say the fight I and proving at himself. RC in this episode. <laughs> Yeah, she's she's very very intolerant of his his uh, eagerness to to wanting to prove himself and all that. And he's she's just, just mad at his ability to outperform all of them. <laughs> well, I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway, all right. So Bulkhead and Dreadwing have an incredible fight for five minutes or whatever, and uh, they finish it off really well. Um, Dreadwing unfortunately does get his aft aft handed to him. Uh, Bulkhead recovers. At the same time, Smokescreen does does in, indeed make it to the, the uh, relic, relic, but this is going to be the relic. So if I ever hold this up, you guys will know that I'm talking about the relic. Ta -da! Mm -hmm. um, uh, he does indeed make it to the relic, but unfortunately, Starscream has super speed, and he just sort of knocks him in the back, takes it, and then he hides out on top. So when Bulkhead gets there and wakes up uh, Smokescreen... He can ask him, hey, what happened? And Smokescreen's like, I was going to ask you know, the same, same thing. And they, unfortunately, begin talking about the relics. You know, well, it's not a bad thing. We missed this one relic. We still need the, you know, Megatron still needs the other three because I didn't know Starscream took it um, to be able to revive Cybertron. So now Starscream knows what the key is for. He knows that there's four of them in total. And uh, so he got away with one of them. 
Megatron, on the other hand, because Dreadwing wasn't there to see what happened to the Relic, they believe the Autobots have two of them, and the Autobots believe Megatron has two of them. It's all very confusing at that point. And so, now they also get to the last Relic. So they both decode, the Optimus and Soundwave both decode the last uh, Relic, and uh, Soundwave goes out trying to get the Relic, because they find out that it is not a location that is given to them with the last coordinates, but it is indeed an image. And the image is of. I Skull groaned Tree. when this scene happened. I'm like, <laughs> what? And it's and and, oh. and as usual, I'm left with the question of, okay, number one, how do they know it's smokescreen? Because um, that assumes number one that he took no other, you know, I mean, for for purposes of the show, they don't look different when they take different alt modes because they they don't want to remake a model just so that they have a Cybertronian mode and then a, uh, you know, a USA mode. What are you doing? Get. Uh. <laughs> It's, uh, <laughs> Please get rid of that. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't have anything relating to Prime discussions. So I just took a funny picture from my computer and put it up there. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, RC. Now, for gets... those of you that are listening to the recording of this, you missed something really funny. I don't know. He might find a way to put it on the podcast. No. Uh, no. I'm sure. Okay, that's good because I don't think you should. Think it's you just a fat woman leaning against a lamppost, and it says pole dancing. Wrong on so many levels. <sighs> she's also, dressed. You, it's you not, need to put a link she's wearing to clothes. YouTube. Well, it's funny because the pants are flesh colored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're sweatpants. <laughs> they're actually pants. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. 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 So they Praying get back. Smoke Green is sad because he didn't get the relic. He's not the chosen one. Blah, blah, blah. And then RC gets on him all about. You need to stop being all about you and need to be tor- more team oriented. He's like, I am team oriented. I would give my life for you guys. It just so you know, it just so happens that I actually have more fervor than you guys. You know, I want to do well, and uh, RC scares him off. So he goes running away, and of course, again, with back to the smoke screen. It shows an image of smoke screen. They're like, oh, it's smoke screen. Great, because nobody else has the same you know silhouette in the Transformers universe, at least not in Prime yet. Um, they're lucky, I guess. <laughs> oh, hi, kitty. Oh, that was... He, oh. <laughs> he, he looks at the camera, too. He knows. And then he just goes back to it. Back to it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and you have a dog, because your dog just saw the cat. He's the like, dog just saw the cat licking I gotta come watch this. <laughs> oh, my God. We're this is as bad topic. as what Gary Chalk talked about last time. <laughs> but we're seeing it in live action. I, I thought my... Rack on praying action was bad. Okay, okay, okay. So now both the code the image of smoke screen. They both know it's smoke screen, and smoke screen is out in the middle of nowhere. And Soundwave is out looking for the Autobot things, um, the Autobot base, because they knew where the kids were at. Which miraculously, the kids are not in this episode. I don't, you know. And and Bullkid even says, you know, he he mentions Miko, and at that point, I was like, the kids aren't in this episode, and I was like, I don't miss them. I was like, this is amazing. It's a fantastic episode. I'm hoping Re- Raph is relocated way, way far away. I know. I'm thinking this. I'm wondering to myself. I'm like, did the military finally like, you know, like send them into like witness protection or something and relocate them all? Nah, Raph just killed everyone. <laughs> Instead of just past, leaving so them, you know, them. to the Autobots, getting the getting in the way and everything. Raph was kidnapped by Crane. That's the what story I'm going by. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, okay. Gotta get back on topic. Okay. So Soundwave. So Soundwave was looking for the Autobot base so that he had laser beak scouting the area, happened to find Sci- uh, I wanted to call him Side, but I'm sorry because you just spoke. <laughs> smoke, smoke screen! screen. They both start with us. My apologies. Uh, he wanted to f- uh, so they found smoke screen, laser beak found smoke screen, starts firing on him, and it just so happens that, hey, we're looking for him because he's the fourth key for some reason. He's the relic. And cliffhanger! Uh, Soundwave the- drags off the unconscious uh, smoke screen he knocked down with the sound waves, and the Autobots just go running after him, and he's like, no, we're not going to make it through the ground bridge. <laughs> Whenever, oh, whenever they showed uh, uh, Alpha Trion, uh, was it last week or is it yeah. on this this week's episode? Was, whenever they showed Alpha Trion last week, I kept expecting him to go, "Oh my!" You know what's bad? I'm a huge George Takei fan. 
I did not realize that was George Takei until I. Oh, oh, I, I, all I could that see that was Yokotron. I know George Takei's voice, but for some reason it didn't click with me until then. Yeah. Was, when Alpha Tron was talking, I was like, is that George Takei? <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I, I could oh only see Yokotron in, fa- in my head. That was like, okay. Did no. he do Yokotron? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> we need more time Alpha Tron. We need more George Takei in everything. Yeah. Now, now, if Alpha Tron comes out uh, as it's a toy and they release him with a fencing uh, outfit, yeah. Yes. <laughs> or, 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 a, or a teacup. And you pull a little lever on him and he goes, oh my. Oh my. Oh my. God. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last relic is on the planet of Praxis. <laughs> I put up something prime related. Ah! Oh goodness! <laughs> well, I mean, you complained about the last picture, so. <laughs> I guess it is robot. So we Ellie, what? And Ellie, it's what, prime Wait, robot. what? What is Jack doing there with his hand? <laughs> He's watching. He looks he like is- the llama. He is feeling in his pocket for loose change. Another <laughs> <laughs> roll of quarters. I think he found a roll of quarters. Looks like the a roll of quarters. Of, the, <laughs> the look uh, on Bumblebee's face is priceless. There, and the placement of his hand is priceless. Well, you got RC. You got that little. She's got that little grin, and then Bumblebee's got this all serious, down to business look. <laughs> <laughs> Taking care of business. Every I'm working day. overtime. <laughs> Watch out! <laughs> he, he, yeah, because he's a taxi in this version. Oh my gosh! Oh, my he God. left the meter running. <laughs> no! Oh! Okay, this episode has completely been derailed. Before we finish up, anybody have any thoughts on this episode Trans- of Transformers Prime? I think the lighting of that picture is very, very good. Not the picture. The episode. Yes. <laughs> Take the picture down. So, uh, my thoughts. It was fantastic. Sideburns. All right, uh, go ahead. Yeah, my thoughts were, um, and I tweeted this like while I was watching it. Why does Team Prime keep getting all over Smokestream's case within with, or after you know the first three episodes he's been in, he's outsmarted all of them. <laughs> I was just like, stop, stop. Yeah. <laughs> He's been doing very well. It's like, well, did RC, they find especially RC? Gosh dang, she she flies off the handle every chance she gets, and she's Typical gonna get on smoke screens case. So did they find all the first three keys? I thought they'd only found two keys, and then all of a sudden the thing said smoke screen. No, they found all three. Um, one is in possession of every faction right now, pretty much. No, the trash star screen got a hold of one. If you call yeah. star screen a faction. Just sort of himself. He went rogue. Himself. Him and his non ex- no longer existent clones. I was wishing his clones would stay around a little while longer. Yeah, he still needs to be able to transform. It would have been funny if he'd have kept the clones around for a while and then joked about how he's going to paint them different colors so he could tell them apart. <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be good. And be animated all over and again. And then he could name them separately so he could also further tell them apart. They were all just too egotistical to, to follow each other's lead. Ew, Drawn has beads. Okay, so my thoughts on this episode. Away. I thought it was extremely well animated and went back, and it brought up something because I've been watching the animation in all of the episodes. Um, I've been paying attention as the animation sort of goes up and down, and it has a very repetitive cycle. Um... And I and I just come to the conclusion that they must have one person animate each episode, as awkward as it sounds. Normally, you have one person animate each scene, or even if if for some reason you would do one of each character, especially if it's like a video game. But this is a show, so you'd have one person do each scene. But it seems like they have one animator for each and every episode, and whichever animator is the one that does all the spectacularly animated ones, they need to just hire him to do all the animated. Animated shows. Cause well, he probably can't handle all the work. That's why the other guys helping out. I know, but they're not that good. We can wait for the <laughs> other episodes. 
I mean, some and of the poses some, in this episode. Some animator just dropped his cereal bowl and did a face palm, and he's but crying. But does he know he's, he's not the He's sobbing into animator. his cereal. He works <laughs> oh, for them. I'm, he should be I'm happy. sure he knows. I'm sure he knows. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that. Well, see, it wouldn't be just one animator either, because there's maybe there's maybe two great animators. There's the one spectacular animator, and then there's probably like five mediocre ones that just get the action done and out of the way. This one guy that did this episode was fantastic. All of the poses were dramatic. They were held. The timing was perfect. I'm sorry I'm rambling about animation, but this is like my favorite thing in the world. So I just had to talk about it. Well, I noticed, oh, no. I noticed I... RC seemed to move a little more sassy than usual. Oh, she had a good one when she was about to go into the ground bridge. That pose. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. Hot yeah, and then when back. Red Wing was, you know, with even just the scenes, it's like, even he had, you know, an effect on the storyboarding. He was like, you know, maybe he had some input and said, you know, I think this would be more effective, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then, you know, with the, with Dreadwing, and he's just <laughs> and bouncing him in the fight with Bulkhead. And and she's having a conniption. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm a, I, I wasn't as deeply aware of it as you were. Um, but I did, I have been noticing some episodes I'm just like, the animation in this episode is subpar. And then other episodes, it's like, oh, this is all freaking sweet. Yeah, some of the episodes, it's sort of like the animation is just sort of, uh, and then some episodes, it's like they totally avoid a lot of animation except for the facial, and they'll be just, you know, just sort of standing there and then just talking and, you know, just moving their faces, maybe talking if they have to talk to somebody, but they don't really move a lot. And then even this guy, the, the awesome animator, he makes sure to actually use body language while they're talking. Like right now, I'm moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sideburn is the, the guy that doesn't move except when he's scratching his arm. <laughs> <laughs> and Insane Galvatron is the guy who could be moving, but you can't see it because he's in the dark. <laughs> This is this is what your animator could be moving, but he's not. Now back at me. And I'm the guy what I'm who's doing. sick of Transformers Prime. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick I, of I the wish all, I wish all the characters Transformers on Transformers Prime. Prime had this kind of articulation. And like, I actually, disagree. In the car, that would yeah. be Transformers Energon. Yes, <laughs> that would be Transformers it's like, Energon. It's like when they, when they walk on the screen, it'd be like this. It'd be like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> That's still, in a nutshell, is it not? Yeah. I still stand by my belief that Transformers Prime has a fantastic characters, fantastic animation, yet the story is just garbage. I think the story's okay. They just set up for too much potential that they never yes. deliver on. Exactly. I, yeah. yeah. They finish things too fast, and there's no underlying well, they premise behind Transformers Prime. It's just get MacGuffin of the week. It's pretty yeah. Much. Well, that's the theme of season two. Season that's one was true. all about the, you know, Energon zombies and, you know, the coming Unicron. The Unicron. At least, at least they're starting to use the relics now, and they weren't just, hey, we got a relic, let's put it in storage. Yeah, I'm it's at like, the point where use I the spark the extractor. <laughs> you guys have it. I just use it for it. knockout and Dreadwing and Ratchet, and then that's it. The show's too boring for me anymore. Just yeah, I like it anymore. I, I agree. I mean, the characters, I think are just excellent characters. Um, what I think has is doing the show in right now is, um, you know, they want to do the standalone episode thing like Beast Wars did, except for Beast Wars had always had an overarching story. And it just feels just like funny. they aren't committed to the overarching story until the last five episodes. And then things happen, like, extremely fast to where it's shallow and doesn't mean anything. Yeah, you uh, can just tell they're afraid about. they aren't going to get another season, like Transformers Animated or whatever. Yeah. That was yeah. Animated's fault. That was the, that was the hub. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but see, Animated had that over, over that story arc that went over everything, but then it didn't get completed because the show ended. I think mm -hmm. you know, Prime's kind of, yeah. the writers were kind of playing it safe so that the show would get canceled at the end of the season. It, went right in the, it wasn't right in the middle of a big arc. Yeah. So you do a, an arc per season. Yep. But the problem is, is it's it's made even the most interesting characters start to feel shallow. Like Megatron, I think he's um you know at the start of the season I was like, this is the best Megatron you know we've had in a long time. And now it's just sort of like Okay, come on Megatron, what's going on? 
<laughs> it's just like he's not he's not well, he, doing anything. He he's... can't be afraid of anything anymore because the only time that he's been afraid is of the Star Saber and now he's totally destroyed it and so he can't ever be afraid again. Well, because he just made the dark Star look, Saber. I know, but now now he knows and he's not really afraid of it. But that one look of fear that he had, that like actual fear actually scared me. I was like, wow, Megatron's actually oh, yeah, afraid. Oh, yeah, I thought that was amazing until in the next episode it was all resolved. And it was yeah. Like, yeah. It goes back to the whole resolving oh, things too quickly. Yeah. Yep. It's like, well, hey, uh, here's I think a, a lot of it. They, now we need to get rid of it. They, so what's Megatron going to do? It's a show it? toward uh, children today because, quite frankly, I think a lot of children today have very, very short attention spans. and they, <laughs> That's true. They don't expect children to remember what happened six, seven episodes ago to relate to what's happening in this episode. Hey, what happened to that unicorn guy at the core of the planet? They've forgotten and moved on. They remember something cool, maybe, but uh, I I, I sincerely doubt that. that They they keep it for the short attention spans. Beast Wars and Animated, they, they didn't require you to remember everything that happened across the season. You know, for the final events, but you know, if you paid attention, you realized, well, this connected, this connected, and this connected. Um, but you didn't have to remember that. I mean, an animator was aimed at kids much younger than Prime is aimed at. So it's, I don't think it's a good excuse, but you know, we get what we get. So when are we all going to start taking up rescue bots now? You know, so I can start, you know, letting all that out. Since you're all fed up with Prime now, I mean, I'm, I'm still not fed up Prime, with Prime but... at all. I actually, I, I'm actually in t- uh, totally enjoying the show. I love it. Oh yeah, um, I, you know, to me, Smokescreen has breathed sort of a new life into this show because I'm like, now I have a character once again that I, I look forward to seeing what's going on. Um, because of you know, Rider. it's like Bulkhead. They resolved him so fast. Unfortunately, um, they had they had a good thing going with him, and then the one episode where he just goes away. Yeah, it's like he's limping in the other episode. Apparently, working out his issues with Smokescreen instantly healed his body. Because <laughs> the next yep. episode, he's like, oh, "I can walk again, guys." Look, um, and I can I can not only walk, I can fight, just like I yep, did. I'm fully healed. Yeah, so much ratchet saying he'll never be the same again. Yeah, apparently, never is like five episodes. So. I, well, I still Prime, that's a long time. I still really like Transformers Prime, but it's uh they are being they're playing it very safe with their storytelling. And that's that's an issue that I think is going to come and, you know, bite them in the end. Playing it safe, the new jumping the shark. <laughs> yes. Pretty much. Well, I believe that'll uh, if unless anybody else has any other comments. Right, we we, we got to we got to talk about the promo for the next week's episode. Just uh, how it. hilarious it was. I you know I watched the downloadable episode and I didn't see what you were talking about on it. No, it was on it was a promo. Uh, it's, huh. it's one of the ads that they put on the hub or whatever after. Oh, okay. I yeah, early in the credits. Here, I've got I got a link for it to it right here for you. Well, I can, get my computer I, I can watch it later. My well, opinion on it is I you think You can that watch the, it while we talk about it. I think that the the driving vehicle is supposed to stay in robot mode and actually, you know, ride the flying one like a surfboard. So he can shoot. Well, apparently Megatron did not send give him the memo. You know, it's or like he just Megatron gets angry. He's like, "Go get him." Well, I don't and, think he looked behind him when he was grabbing. He was just sort of like mm. Yeah, just grabbing the two nearest vehicles. <laughs> It's like go after him and throws them both off. <laughs> That's the best part. The best part was, you know, if the one had just fallen in robot mode, it would it would have been one thing. But the fact that it, you know, like, you see the flying one transform and fly away, and then the car one transforms and just falls as a car. You know, <laughs> like, why didn't it just stay a robot? Why even transform it? Knew it was a car. Uh, because did Megatron, that push, that did Megatron push the auto transform button as he threw it off or something? <laughs> That was hilarious. It was like he transformed to try to fly away, but it didn't work. No, he transformed because he knew he was going to die, so he was going to go out in style. <laughs> he got airbags might protect him when he hits the ground. <laughs> got airbags in car mode. Have mercy. Well, um, I believe that'll wrap us up this week for this this edition of Transformers for your listening pleasure. Um, 
be sure to check us out on uh, geekexistence.com and check out the forums on there. Uh, log on and uh, discuss anything that you might want to talk about that's uh, Transformers related or even just geek. Um, also, check out our YouTube channel. We've been on fire lately of uh, uh, not just uh, putting up some uh, videos related to Transformers and uh, and Brave and, and stuff like that. Uh, I put up a, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I put up a uh, review of Diarobo. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, we've also got some tech gadgets and uh, um, and other things that are being reviewed by our uh, uh, sister podcast, uh, Transformer, or I'm sorry, uh, Geek Existence uh, Science and Tech. Uh, Zemza Bob over there is uh, reviewing uh, quite a number of things. And uh, I believe he's doing a uh, iPhone 5 case giveaway. Uh, so you may want to check that out as well. Uh, check us out on Twitter and follow us on there, as well as on Facebook at Geek Existence. Um, so we will see you next week. This is Weird Wolf along with Insane Galvatron. Goodbye, everybody. Natsume Ryu. <laughs> For the people listening to the podcast, you may want to say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Sideburn, too. Voltron's humping me right now. Actually, yeah. he's pelvic thrusting the camera. <laughs> and somebody who I won't re uh, mention their name who is playing it's with his censored. toys in front of the camera. Yay! Yes. Guard convoy has been censored. Beep. <laughs> Beep. Form blazing sword. We shall see Beep. you next time on Transform. Pleasure. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs>